Good morning. Welcome to Kingston Springs United Methodist Church. We are so glad you are worshiping with us today. I just want to remind you that our food and diaper drive is this Saturday, July 11th. We are collecting items to refill the Art Community Resource Center. And the list of items needed can be found on our church Facebook page. And you can drop off those items here at the church this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And also, if you still have your Lenten coin box from our Lent season this year, you can drop those off as well this Saturday at the church. We were collecting coins and, and dollars this Lenten season to be given to the Campus for Human Development, which hosts Room in the Inn. And we were unable to have in-person worship during um, Easter Sunday, which we were going to collect those then. So we were going to collect them this Saturday. And if you can't find your box, you can bring a check or a cash envelope and mark on it Lenten Missional Giving. The order of worship for today's service can also be found on our church Facebook page. It has hymn lyrics on it, so you can sing along with us today. We will receive Holy Communion later in the service, so you will want to have a piece of bread or a cracker and juice and water available for that. And as always, we will light our candle together. So if you have a candle at home, you can light yours as I light mine. It is really windy today, so we'll see if it stays lit. This candle reminds us that the Spirit of God is with us as we worship from home. The Spirit is with us when we are worshiping outside in the wind. The Spirit is with us always. So every space can be sacred space because the Spirit of God is there. And now I invite you to join in the call to worship as Kathy leads us and your responses are printed on the screen. Come to the Lord, all you people. We come seeking God's healing love. Make your hearts ready to discover God's power in your lives. We open our hearts and spirits to receive God's loving gifts. Alleluia. Amen. Let us continue to worship as Sue leads us in the hymn, Dear Lord, Lead Me Day by Day. Thank you. 
God bless you all. Be safe, be well, and know that we love you very much. Hang in there. As we move into a time of prayer, I will lead us in lifting up certain people and situations throughout the prayer. And at the end of each section, I will pause for a few moments of silence to, for you to lift up prayers at home. And then I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and we will all respond, hear our prayer. As we go to prayer today, let us continue to remember Miss Edna. She was transferred from the hospital to the Trace last Tuesday, where she will receive physical therapy. So we need to remember to pray for her and her continued strength. Let us pray for our church for the world and for all those in need. God of mercy and grace, we confess that we have failed to love you with our whole lives. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We ask for reconciliation and forgiveness in our own lives as we lift up our prayers of confession. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May all those who confess your name be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We lift up prayers for our church, that we may be the hands and feet of Jesus in our community and in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We lift up prayers for our nation and its leaders, that they may seek the path of peace, justice, and well-being for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are not free today, people who are victims of human trafficking, those who are in prison, those who are in abusive relationships, those who are oppressed, those in bondage to the disease of addiction, people who are enslaved by poverty and hunger. May they know the power of your liberating love and justice, and may that liberating power work in and through us. We lift up prayers for people who are not free today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. We lift up prayers for our family, friends, co-workers, and neighbors.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who are sick with COVID-19, those around the world who are in quarantine, those separated from their loved ones, those who have lost their source of income, and those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Give them all courage and hope in their struggles. Bring them assurance of your presence with them and empower us to do what we can to help. We lift up prayers for those who are suffering today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now it's time for our children's message. So we invite all the kids out there to gather around your screen for our children's time together. So the question for today is, have you ever been scared to try something new? Maybe it's a different kind of food that you've never eaten before, or you're scared to do something new that you've never done. Tessa, have you been ever had to try something new and you didn't want to do it? Um, I didn't want to get poison ivy. She didn't want to get poison ivy, yeah. I didn't want to get on the pedal, the pedal bowl. Oh, so we were at um, her Gigi and Pop's house in North Carolina, and they, there was a pond there um, near their house, and they have paddle boats, and she was scared to get on there with her. Because there was tarantulas and spiders all over it. Oh, there was, okay. It was a little bit dirty. Mm -hmm. Um she was scared to get on it with her pops because she had never got on a paddle boat before and apparently it was a little bit dirty. And, and there was tarantulas and spiders all over. Oh, okay. So, um, so that was something you, that was, she had never done before and she was a little bit scared to do it. So is there something like that that you have been scared to do? Maybe it's a certain food you didn't want to try because you never eaten it before. In our story for today, Jesus is talking to some... Ooh, ooh, ooh. What? I don't like beets or radishes either. Oh, yeah. So, she also... Uh, we had beets for dinner at Gigi and Pops, and she did not want to try the beets because she, they were new. Um, so, in our story for today, Jesus is talking to people who didn't want to do things differently. They didn't want to try something new that Jesus was offering them. Um, and also John the Baptist, who was a follower of Jesus. So John was asking people to change the way they were treating other people, um, to treat people kindly, to ask for forgiveness for the way that they were living and treating people. And Jesus also was eating with people that um, a lot of people didn't eat with. Um, and these people who Jesus are talking to in our story didn't like that. They didn't like the people that Jesus was eating with. So Jesus was encouraging people to show, share God's love with others. And these people that Jesus was talking to, they didn't want to share, show God's love. They didn't want to change the, what they were doing and try a different way of living. So they, um, they rejected Jesus. They said, no, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna live that way. But Jesus is encouraging us to share God's love, to say yes to um, how God wants us to live in love and share God's love with others. So we're gonna sing a song today. And I used to sing this song to Tessa when she was a baby. 
It's called I Surrender All. We haven't sung it together in our children's time, but I'm gonna sit, we're gonna sing it. And uh, the chorus just is pretty simple. It's just I Surrender All is what the chorus is. I'm gonna sing the verse and then we can all sing the chorus together. And do you know what it means to surrender, Tessa? Do you know what that word means? Surrender means you say yes. So when we surrender to Jesus, we say, yes, Jesus, we will accept your love and we will share your love with others. So before we sing, Tessa wanted us to show us something that she made. Tessa, you want to hold it up? No, you want me to do it? All right, so this is a snowflake, even though it's summer. Um, and she put a cross on there and that helps us to remember that God loves us and that we are to show God's love to others. Thank you, Tessa. All right. You guys ready to sing? All to Jesus I surrender. All to Thee I freely give. I will ever love and trust Thee in thy presence daily live i surrender all i surrender all all to thee my blessed savior i surrender Let us pray. And I invite you to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Help us to say yes to you and share your love with others. Amen. Hear the scripture reading from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19 and 25 through 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Breathe on us the breath of life. Amen. We have lived in our house for four and a half years now. And for all those years, the items in our kitchen have been in the same drawers. I knew exactly which store the silverware was in, which store the kitchen towels were in, and where the plastic wrap could be found. But my husband recently decided to reorganize items in our kitchen drawers. When I first opened what was supposed to be the silverware drawer, I was completely caught off guard when I saw a drawer full of cooking utensils. 
After a minute or two uh, confusion, I opened the drawer underneath it, hoping to find the silverware, only to see kitchen towels. Levi then came into the kitchen and announced that he had reorganized the kitchen drawers. For the next few days, every time I opened a drawer in the kitchen that I was once familiar with, only to be faced with an unfamiliar drawer, I became frustrated. I can't tell you the amount of times I have opened the silverware drawer only to remember after I opened it that the silverware drawer was no longer the silverware drawer. Change can be disorienting and difficult. It required me to learn a different way of drawer organization and I did not like learning this new way. Often I think we balk at change because it requires something of us. It requires us to learn something, to act differently, and possibly to give up something to make room for the different in the new. People have been balking at change for centuries. This is nothing new. Jesus highlights this as he describes the generation that he is living in and their responses to John the Baptist and himself. John the Baptist lived an austere life. He didn't indulge in many foods and festivities. His diet consisted of locusts and honey, and he lived most of his life in the wilderness until he came preaching to folks. He urged people to repent of their sins and turn to God. Jesus says here in Matthew, the people rejected him and demonized him. I mean, literally, they said he has a demon. So then Jesus comes and he eats and drinks with folks. He attends social gatherings. He heals people, feeds them. But the people don't like that either. They don't like these folks who Jesus eat with, eats with and hangs out with. They don't like the people he welcomes to the table. So they reject him too, calling him a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. There is no winning with this crowd. They don't like John because he doesn't eat and drink, and they don't like Jesus because he does. Now, on the surface, it seems like these people are fickle, unable to make up their mind about what they want. But I think that at the heart of their rejection is their refusal to change. John calls them to repent, to confess their sin, to confess the ways they have missed the mark of God's intentions for creation, and to change their perspectives and actions to be more aligned with God's intentions. But they don't want to do that, so they demonize him. Jesus' radical inclusion of people who are outcast, vulnerable, sick, and marginalized challenged people. It called people to look at their own prejudices towards others and change the way that they and societal systems treated these folks. But people didn't want to do that either. So they dismiss him as a glutton and drunkard. Often when we're faced with someone or something that poses the risk of change for us, whether it be changing our worldview, changing our firmly held beliefs, or changing our spending habits. Instead of having an open mind, we shut them out and demonize them. It's interesting to me the links that we go to to avoid change, even if the change is needed. We stay in toxic relationships because we just can't bring ourselves to face the amount of effort and work it would take to make the change and end the relationship. We stay in jobs that are unfulfilling and at times harmful to our physical and mental well-being 
because we just can't muster up the energy to start all over in a new job. We stay unwaveringly loyal to a political party or political leader, even when they act in ways that are deceitful, harmful, and destructive, particularly to people who are marginalized. Because blind loyalty is easier, especially if it protects our own interests and privilege. We disregard scientific research because if we truly acknowledge it, it would require us to change the way we consume the Earth's resources and the way we exist in the world. And we're not willing to make that sacrifice. So we claim that climate change is not real and COVID-19 isn't that big of a deal. Behind this resistance to change, fear is driving the ship. We fear that we won't be able to make it on our own, so we stay in the toxic relationship. We fear the unknown, so we stay in the crappy job because it is familiar. We fear other people, people who have black and brown skin, people who immigrate here, people of different religious traditions, people of lower economic statuses, and we allow political pundits and politicians to stoke our fear that those other people will take what's ours, our power and privilege. And we allow that fear to drive our loyalty to pundits, political parties, and leaders who use our fear to gain votes. We fear having to sacrifice our rights and liberty, so we disregard science and refuse to wear masks. We reject change even if it's needed, even if it protects other people, even if it will bring about our own freedom from fear and oppression of others. We resist it with every fiber of our being and demonize those who challenge us to change. Those first few days after Levi changed the kitchen drawers were frustrating and disorienting. Each time I opened a drawer, questions rose in anger in my mind. Why did he change everything around? Why couldn't he just leave things the way they were? Things were fine the way they were. I was angry at the change, partly because it wasn't my idea. I wanted to show Levi that this change was awful. And I looked for ways to prove that it was. But the more I actually saw the way that he had organized it, and the more open I was to the change, I actually realized that it was a better way to organize the kitchen drawers. And it is. It is a better way. There is a better way that God wants to order the world. God's vision for the world is one of justice, where everyone is on equal footing and everyone has access to a flourishing life. God's vision for the world is one of peace, where there are no violent power grabs, no, oppressious, no oppression, no senseless suffering. Jesus preached this, lived this, and died for this. He challenges his followers to repent of how we have thwarted God's intentions for the world by our actions or inactions, and to change our actions to help bring about God's vision for the world. The good news is we don't do this alone. We are yoked together with Jesus. We are linked with him, and we are yoked with each other. We are linked together with each other. We can help each other to not remain stuck in our old ways of thinking and being that are unhealthy and harmful. We can walk this road of repentance and change together, opening ourselves to live into the newness of God's vision for the world. 
Will you join me in walking this road of change? We have the opportunity now to respond to God's gift of grace by the giving of our tithes and offerings. This is an act of worship where we recognize that all that we have is a gift from God. You can send a check in the mail to the church at 368 North Main Street, Kingston Springs, 37082. Or you can give online at ksumc.churchcenter.com slash giving. I will pray over the offering and then we will continue to worship as Rietta and Karen lead us in This Is My Song. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for these gifts that you have given to us and we now give back to you. Bless them, multiply them, and use them for your work in the world. May your spirit help us to be open to the change that you want to bring in our lives as we give our time, talent, and resources. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands of far and wide. This is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. My country skies are bluer than the ocean, and sunlight beams on clover leaf and pine. But other lands have sunlight too, and clover. Holy Communion, so we will want to have your communion elements ready. And I invite you to join with me in the liturgy for Holy Communion, and your responses will be printed on the screen. Though physically separated from one another, we are still bound together as family through God's Spirit. As members of the household of God, we now join together virtually, yet still present to one another 
as we gather from across the miles. This presence is marked by our shared praises and prayers, our shared hearing and affirming of God's word, and now our shared eating. The peace and presence of the Lord be with us. So we lift up our hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always, day after day after day. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathe into us the breath of life. When we turned away, our love failing and our bodies diseased, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, wholeness, and new life. When the flood came, you provided an ark. When the plagues came, you provided safety. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love remains steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is your son who came to preach the good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, free the oppressed, and announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick. He is healing the sick now. He will heal the sick day after day after day. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us be a community of healer and hope givers as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour all your Holy Spirit on us, gather here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, made whole by his witness, passion, and life. In this season of social distancing, may you remind us that we are never spiritually distant from you or from each other. We belong to your body. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. And now, Holy Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And everyone says, Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This bread reminds us that any life, no matter how broken or sick or distorted it may become, can be made whole again. This cup reminds us that any life, no matter how empty 
are lonely or isolated, it may become, can be filled again. These are the gifts of God for everyone who wants to receive God's grace. Thanks be to God. And now you can receive Holy Communion by whatever means that you have. Let us pray. Day after day after day, you give yourself to us, and two or three gather in your name. In connection across the miles and in bread and wine, as we go from this gathering around your table, may we feel restored to your body, companioned by your people, and sustained by the power of your spirit, as we witness to your healing and reconciling work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now you can finish eating your communion elements or you can pour them out outside and give them back to God's creation. And now go in the strength of the Spirit who enables you to open yourself to the change that God wants to bring. In the name of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, Amen.